Hello, welcome to Discover Dorico. Uh, hello from me, from a cold, damp bit of England. This is a live session. If you're watching on Catch Up, then uh, today's session was recorded live on Wednesday, the 25th of November, 2020. Um, I'm going to be reading the chat down here. So, um, oh dear, I've just seen Daniel's on as well. Hello, everybody who's joined. Um, I'm glad to see you're all here. Um, so, I thought today we could talk about some uh, some new things, of course, uh, you know, um, how you can connect Dorico to, to new sample libraries and that kind of thing. Although in this case, actually, this sample library, Iconica, has been around for a little while. Um, you've just let me know the sound is good. So that's that's good. Always good to know. So uh, currently, you probably already know Dorico is included in the Steinberg 50% off cyber deals until the 7th of December. So if you haven't already purchased or you want to cross grade an upgrade from Elements or to update from an earlier version of Dorico, now is the the time if you go to the steinberg.net website. Um, so today in this session what we're going to talk about is sample libraries. Um, we've looked at some sample libraries before and this time we're going to look at Iconica. Sample libraries, it's a slippery slope so be careful. Um, and in this, I thought actually what we'd probably better start with is kind of how these all fit together, how how things work. So let's uh, just have a quick recap of where thing where we're at. So Halion. So you get Halion with, uh, actually, apparently Halion. I get it wrong very often. But anyway, it's included with Dorico. Sample size, it's about 9 gigs when you install it on your computer. The Halion Symphonic Orchestra is installed um, with Dorico by default. So I thought, you know, if we, we can start there looking at size and everything else. I know various other people have also got Note Performer. Uh, it's a good option. It's kind of what I call a kind of fire and forget option, if you like. You you can just load Note Performer. There's not too much that you can tweak that, or that you need to tweak because they've done a lot of the intelligence for you. Um, sample size on your computer, it's actually it's quite a small library um, for to fit on your computer. It's only about one and a half gig. Um, and I've put all the prices in for kind of comparisons here in US dollars just so you can kind of com roughly compare apples with apples. Big apples with big apples, I suppose. Um, so Note Performer is about $129. Um, we've also, in these sessions, and for other things that have playback templates that you can already use with Dorico, um, we looked in an earlier session at BBC Spitfire and the, um, the, the Spitfire BBC Symphony Orchestra. Um, there are three versions, Discover, Core and Pro. Um, there are playback templates for all of those. Um, there's a small tweak I need to uh, do to at least one of those. But anyway, there are playback templates available for those for Dorico. Um, if you do want to, you know, if you want to buy one of those, then as a comparison, the Discover one's relatively small hard drive size, about 200 meg. Um, it's $49 or free if you sign up and wait a couple of weeks. They do a core version, which is possibly the most useful for many people in Dorico. It's about 24 gig sample size, uh, is just over $400. Um, and then they have a pro version, which needs 580 gigs of hard drive space to, to fit uh, and is about uh, 999. Um, I believe Spitfire haven't announced their Black Friday or I think they're doing offers for a week. I think they might announce them tomorrow. So, you, you know, you might want to check with any of these prices. Always check with the manufacturer. I've, you know, just given these as, as comparisons. So you can see where where we're at. Um, also. Last session, so uh, it was actually earlier this month, um, we looked at the playback templates that VSL have done for their synchronized SE series. Um, and this can come in between one and nine volumes. Um, if you just buy volume one, for example, it needs about 64 gig hard disk space, about $350. If you have all nine volumes, then you could be looking at up to 270 gigs of space that you need over $2,000. Um, and we looked at that library and the playback template and things like that. Um, in the last session. Um, so again, check manufacturers' websites. But today what we're going to be looking at is Iconica. So Iconica is a Steinberg, uh, yes, that's us, it's a Steinberg um, orchestral sample library. It was done in partnership with orchestral tools. Um, Iconica sections and players, the bit we're going to be looking at, takes about 160 gig of hard drive space and would normally be about 799. Um, but it's also included in the 50% deal. So this session is actually quite good timing. It's almost like I knew. Um, and you can have 50% off that until the 7th of December. So our offers are running basically for um, a couple of weeks. They started just earlier this week. So 
how does Iconica fit with you know some of the other libraries and and and, and things here? Well, if you look just in you know, a hard disk space, then you're looking kind of it's kind of between a, a BBC Core and Pro, if you like. Um, and price-wise would normally kind of also be there, although at the moment, depending on what their offers are and what ours are, maybe it's kind of, you know, similar-ish to core, maybe. Um, there's also, of course, it will depend on which instruments you're looking for. And I have got in the back of my mind, I should probably write a, a blog article with more detail of kind of, you know, which instruments are included in each of these, um, because often the orchestral libraries like ours and Spitfires and some of them might not include things like a piano, because you may already have one somewhere else, or you know VSL does. So you know there are some differences that maybe we you know you, you want to look at as to which instruments are included in each of these, and also which playing techniques. But you know price and size wise, it's kind of you know fits kind of in the middle. So if we kind of you know do 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 this kind of Iconica is going to kind of sit in the middle between these. It's not necessarily once you get past you know note performers really the only far and forget that's primarily designed for, in fact, exclusively designed for a notation program. The others are really all designed originally to use with a sequencer, like Cubase or otherwise. Um, and so what we're going to look at is kind of how uh, we can use Iconica with that and, and a playback template that I've done for Iconica. Um, during this session, I'm going to be checking all the comments and things. So if I look over here occasionally, it's because I'm, I'm, I'm checking, I am checking to see if you're listening and what the comments are. So I will keep an eye on that as well. And if you have any questions as we go, then let me know. So now Iconica itself is actually part of, you, you might see it come up as th three different options. There's Iconica Ensembles, there's Sections and Players, and there's Opus. Ensembles is, uh, if you imagine your strings, for example, you're going to have an, on an ensemble string sound instead of individual violins, violas, cellos. Um, you get ensemble brass sounds, for example, instead of individual uh, instruments. So Sections and Players is probably more useful for you in Dorico because you then have more um, you know, usable players, single players, that you can use uh, and sections for strings and things like that. So we're, we're, the playback template I've done is for sections and players. There is also Iconica Opus, and Iconica Opus is if you want both sections and players and ensembles, then you can bind them both together as Iconica Opus. So that's just to kind of roughly explain we're actually really looking mainly at sections and players here in the middle. And... Somebody just said, what about VE Pro? That was good timing. I read that just at the right time. So I will also, in this session, be looking at Vienna, Ense Vienna Ensemble Pro, which is also by VSL. It also ha happens, I've noticed, that they also have it on offer in their Black Friday deal. Um, so Vienna Ensemble Pro is uh, $172, roughly, at the moment, according to their website, until the 30th of November. So VE Pro... Daniel's just said it as well. It doesn't include any sounds. So what we're going to be looking at, why you would want Vienna Ensemble Pro, why you might want to use it with Iconica or other libraries, but particularly today, why you might want to use it with Iconica, what it does, how it works. And I've also done a what's called a server template for uh, VE Pro to use Iconica with Dorico. So that's what we're going to kind of look at by the end of today. Um, and somebody said, I've already bought Iconica when it came out and there haven't been any dedicated expression maps. So that's exactly what we're going to be looking at today. So I've done a playback template. Our Dorico playback templates include expression maps. And then we're also going to look at how you can use that with VNR Ensemble Pro. So although it's not available on the blog just yet, because I haven't finished the article I'm writing, you will be able to download from our blog for free a playback template for Dorico that includes the expression maps and also when I've worked out where we're going to put it, because it's quite big, the Vienna Ensemble Pro file that you will need, the server file, so that you can then also use it with that and link it all up very easily. So that's what we're going to look at in today's session. So, how do I use it? Let me just check there aren't any comments. Um, there is also a, there's a question about um, solo string instruments. There aren't any in Iconica. Uh, at the moment, I don't know if they're going to be any. Uh, I have no news about that in this session. Um, but we can look at also how you can use Iconica with other libraries. So if there's, a, for example, a solo instrument you want to use from something else, then you can also use that in conjunction with what we're going to be doing today. So to start off with, I'm just going to go to, as, all, as in many of these, I'm just going to start with a new simple project and kind of initially explain 
what you might have done with uh, Iconica and you know how, how these kind of things are set up. So if we, for example, add a section player and add a violin, um, then what you'll get in Dorico by default is in the play menu, in play mode, in our VST instruments, you'll have here, Hallium will load up and you'll have the standard instrument from uh, HSO. Um, let me just check them there. Yep. Um, so yeah. You know, so you'll get uh, you'll get that that instrument in uh, in H uh, in HSO. If you have Iconica installed, and if you want to try it out, there is a thirty day trial as well. So you can download a thirty day trial from our website. So when you go to the load section, um, and up here you can uh, choose what you're loading. So you have all the you know the, the various other options, and most of these will be the dev actually not these bottom ones, but most of these are kind of things you will get with, uh, with Dorico anyway. You'll now have sections and players if you've installed Iconica. So now you're in the sections and players section, you can then say, for example, you'd like to look at strings and you'd like to look specifically at violins, and this will pre-filter down here the violins. Now, Iconica has, for example, in violins one, has violin one dynamics patch and a long notes and a short notes and a standard. And if I double click on one of these to load it up here, then what you actually have in here, when I switch to edit, is the Iconica interface. So by default, out of the box, this is what you would see. It would say violins one standard, and you'd have these techniques. There are actually a whole bunch of other techniques that can also be used. So there's other articulations in here. Um, and some of these articulations, or most of those other articulations, in one of those other patches. So if you're using this, because it's primarily designed originally to be used with a door like Cubase, you could load individual patches, so you could load you know, three or four slots here with different violin one uh, sounds, and you'd probably be using different tracks in Cubase to access those. But that's not really how we work in Dorico, because in Dorico you're going to have one violin staff, and really you want it to trigger these kind of things automatically. So what I've done from here, is you can also, these are called cells in uh, Iconica, and you can add another row of cells, and you can also add or remove extra cells. So you can set up a whole bunch of options in here. Now, these are all playable you know, by default. So you know, now, now this is attached. Um, so uh, over, you know, we've got our violin here. So in play mode, then it's using you know, slot one. And so over here in... Uh, uh, you know, we've we've now got this violin. So if I just change octaves on my MIDI keyboard, so I've got this staccato sample, and I, you can switch to you know, a, any other sample. So you can say, here's the here's the pizzicato sample. Um, so you know, you you can switch these, and these can be switched with various options, key switches or otherwise. And like I said, there's this second row. So. What would be, you know, what the the idea is here is if you had a playback template. So if I do play playback template, I will make this template available after the session. So uh, here is an Iconica playback template, and if I apply and close that, what I've done is put it together in a way that hopefully makes a bit more sense for using with Dorico. So now you see up here it says Iconica strings, and if I click on the little E, now it's loading Hallion. It will take a minute to load because it's actually going to load multiple strings into here. Um, also, my computer's a bit stressed because it's doing a live stream at the moment, apparently, uh, and there's other things going on in the background as well and things that I'll need later. So this will take just a second so it, it can load these samples for us. The other thing is I've set this template up really to do for, for an orchestral template. So individual instruments aren't necessarily going to help you. And actually, this isn't the fastest way of loading things, and that's what will be coming on to later with, with VE Pro. But anyway, you can use it this way if you want to. So there'll be a playback template called Iconica. Um, you'll be able to download it from our blog, and it will load these. So here you see I've loaded Violins 1, Violins 2, Violas, Celli, and Basses. And these are patches that basically I've made, and they're comprised of the samples that are in uh, Iconica, and there's two rows and a whole bunch of uh, options and techniques loaded in here automatically, and Dorico, using expression maps, can now switch between all of these techniques. So it can switch to staccato or spiccato or pizzicato if necessarily, uh, necessary or any of these other techniques. For those people who want to get into this kind of thing, I'm, I've used a switch technique here, and I've used control and MIDI control of 14. So if you see that come up in the expression map, that's what it's doing. When you see MIDI control of 14, the value of that defines which of these cells. So the same key switch with a different controller will load a spiccato. 
So that's how this is basically set up. So all you need to do, the simple option is you just need to go to play, load a playback template, and it will it will load these in. So now I've uh, these are all loaded. Now it has loaded multiple strings, uh, and what Dorico has done over here is also loaded the expression maps for these, and it's put the assign the violin to it. So if you're uh, writing for violin, that's fine. And when you add other strings, so for example, if I now add a, a viola into here. Actually, I want to. I meant to add a section viola. Let's keep them all as section players, shall we? So I'll just press undo. I'll load a section viola. There we go. So now Dorico doesn't need to load the sample, and Hallion doesn't need to load the sample because it's already here as for violas, and your viola over here is already mapped, and it already has the right expression map. So yes, initially, it took a minute to load all of these strings because it was loading them all at the same time. So the downside, of especially doing it this way, is that we're loading all the strings, even if you only want a single violin with this this template, and that's because I've designed this template to work for you know a full orchestra basically. Um, so all of these things, and you know, um, somebody's just asked dynamics as well. Yes, the dynamics work. They will work often with modulation. Sometimes they work with. Um, uh, note velocity, uh, so they will all work as well, and that's all in the expression map. So when you're using that play playback template, when you if you want to have a look in the expression maps over here, you'll then find there are some iconic SMP, so sections and players, um, expression maps here. So here, here, for example, is the one for strings with all the, the string techniques loaded, and uh, you've got uh, options in here, and the volume dynamic for this one is using um, control change one, and uh, you know there's there's various other options in here with all the key switches and everything else set up. So now you can just say go use Iconica and 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 it will work. When you then load another instrument, for example, if it's in the same family, then I've set up these so that each family will load into you know one of these items in the VST rack. If I load, for example, a trumpet, so let's just add a trumpet to this piece then in play mode, what you'll see happen, because I'm using the same playback template, it's now loaded an Iconica Brass option over here, and it will be in the background loading the brass samples, not that window, I want the other one. Oh, I've loaded into that one instead, that's fine. So it would then load the brass samples in the background. Now, you've also got um, the, the options here for adding other instruments, and so, for example, if I add clarinet or flute or anything else then it's a different family so that will then load an iconic woodwinds one as well here's the woodwinds and they're loading in the background now again it will load the entire woodwind family that i've set up here so the first time you load a woodwind instrument it's going to go mm, okay i need to think about that and load all of the instruments but the next time you load one they'll already be there they'll already be loaded so you can see this is again as i said more, most useful if you're using an orchestral setup with everything from Iconica because uh, that's kind of how I've set it up. I'm presuming that you will want to load the full orchestra. It just happens to load a lot of them at the beginning. And each family will be in its own Hallian player. So that's you know that's the, the, the good bit of that. Um, let me just check for a second on the comments. Bear with me a second. Uh, yes, Iconica does follow notation marks, i.e. pizzicato. And dynamics, yes, we talked about that one. And yeah, I think that's okay. Let me know if there's any other questions on that. Like I said, I'm stressing my computer out with what this is loading. Actually, this is a good option also, just to show you for a second here in options. Um, you can see how much RAM it's using. I've told it it's actually allowed to use a fair amount of RAM. If you're going to be loading my template for this, you're going to need a fair amount of RAM for uh, Iconica to load this template because it's quite big. I also said this is loading quite slowly because actually there's already another instance of Iconica loading and loaded in the background in my computer. So I'm going to need a lot more RAM than, than you would. Um, but you know, just be warned, you, you may need, uh, don't go for the minimum specs on the website for how much RAM you're going to use, if you're using my template especially, uh, because I'm going to presume you're using a whole orchestra. So here, as, as I said, you know, it's it's loading all the instruments, so now we've got the horn in here, but actually it's only the trumpet that we've got loaded, and you know, and the, the woodwinds and everything else, you know, they're, they're all going to be loaded in there. So, so that's the, that's the good bit. However, 
because of the way Iconica works, partly the way things are built up, so for example in the strings over here, partly the way these things are built up in the strings, and all of the options that Dorico can save, or that Iconica can save, um, I could, the, Dor using Iconica with Dorico is going to make your Dorico file size quite big bigger than using most other libraries, because a lot of libraries, they only save little bits of information that are just the little bits you can edit from that sample library. So using uh, Note Performer, using VSL even, using BBC SO, it doesn't add a lot to the Dorico file. It adds some information, but not a huge amount. Iconica, because of all the things that actually it can do, all of that information has to be saved inside the Dorico file. So even just loading a few instruments that I have here, means that actually you're going to increase a Dorico file size, and I wouldn't be surprised if this file is already, if I was to save it, something like 100 meg or more, you know, possibly slightly more. If you load a full orchestra, you could be expecting a Dorico file to be possibly even a couple of hundred meg. Now, that be, I mean, is a problem, especially with the Dorico autosave, because every five minutes, Dorico is going to be trying to autosave your project for you, which means actually it's going to slow the process down. You're going to see a beach ball every now and then while Dorico goes, hang on a minute, I just need to save all this information. And all that information includes all the playback information. So the, what the, the problem of doing it this way, using that playback um, template that I've set up, is that your Dorico files will get quite big. If you were to send that Dorico file to somebody else, Unless they also have Iconica, you're probably sending them a bunch of information they don't actually want. Um, so I wanted to look at what was the best way um, in November 2020 of making the file size not very big and, and actually making this work with Iconica much better. So that's where I thought actually it's also useful to talk about uh, VE Pro. So Vienna Ensemble, um, v Vienna Ensemble Pro by VSL is another bit of software um, and it looks well, it looks a bit like this once you've got things loaded into it. So here is a Vienna Ensemble Pro server project. Now, without getting into too much detail about this, because actually I've set it up so that you don't need to know a huge amount of information, all you'll need to do is load up Vienna Ensemble Pro. I did say it's an, it's an extra cost. It's about $170 at the moment with their offer. Um, but you can go file open. You can open the server project that I'll also make available for free with my playback templates. And what this does is it loads each of these. These are called instances. The, I've colored them so they're all different colors so you can see what's going on. So here's a woodwind instance, here's a brass instance, here's a pitch percussion, here's an unpitched percussion, here's a strings. And into here, so if, for example in the woodwinds, we, I've lo it's loaded Halion with all of the instruments in it. So why have we done this? Well, Vienna Ensemble Pro is useful for a couple of reasons. You can completely detach um, this, Vienna Ensemble Pro, so that the information that Iconica is saving is only in the Vienna Ensemble Pro project. So the useful bit, then, is that that information is not in the Dorico file. There's these little options up here, these little arrows here. Um, it's kind of got a it almost looks like a recycle type thing, but it's actually, and there's one here as well, it says decouple instance. So what it means is actually, it's still connected, but it's not passing all the information back to be saved in the Dorico project. It's just saving it in this server project. So the advantage is that this has just been sat here in the background waiting for information to get to it. So, and I've loaded all the, you know, the, the same information into here as I, I had before. So what I will also make available is another playback template, which I think is more useful. And that's a play playback template here, which instead of being Iconica, is also is uh, this one down here, which is a VE Pro Iconica to playback template. So I'm going to apply and close that. So you'll see on the VST instrument rack up here, the ones that I did have will disappear. And this would be the same if you were loading Note Performer or switching to Note Performer or Halion, our own player, or anything else. Um, it will unload anything that, that's loaded in there, and then it will reload with the items that you need from that playback template. Um, and what that will do is then uh, connect up to, you can see now it says VE Pro instead, it will then uh, connect up to these VE Pro instances. Now it's called Vienna on Ensemble Pro Server because actually what you can also do with this is you can run this on a separate computer. So people, you may have been aware of I have, there are people out there who do this kind of thing, who have multiple computers who, that, that run this kind of stuff. So you can put this, just this server software, on another computer. 
Um, and that computer might be the one that has loads of RAM and, you know, everything else. Um, and then across your network, just the internal network in your house, you can then connect this. Now, I'm running it on the same computer at the moment, but, um, you know, you, you can run it that way if you want to. So now over here, what we have is in the endpoint setup, it's still loading all the expression maps and it's still assigning instruments to it, but it's doing it through the Vienna Ensemble Pro. So they have this little interface which looks like this and it says connected. If it doesn't say connected, for example, like this, you just press the connect button. And because I'm on my local computer, just on my computer, it does it by IP address, but I, it's already showing here. I can just say, actually in this one, I want strings. I know that because I loaded the strings option up here. So I can just say, I want strings, please connect. So that's now says connected and it's connected to purple, which is handy because that's the same color as this one over here. So you know it's connected and working. Hooray, hooray for colors. So now basically the, the, the gist is that all of these instruments here are now connected through Vienna Ensemble Pro. In my case, it's on the same computer, but it's completely decoupled. So this Dorico file is now much smaller. My autosave now works properly and I'm not slowing down the process because basically I've offloaded everything to another program and I'm just using these little connectors here to connect it all up. So in kind of, you know, just to explain it in summary, what all you'd need to do is, in the morning, let's say, you load VE Pro and you load my server project that I'll give you. You just go file open, load Iconica, and off it goes. It just does its thing. You don't need to worry about it. Then you can load Dorico and you load the playback template. So you choose the VE Pro Iconica playback template. It will automatically connect with all of these little options to connect into all of the instances for each of the orchestral families into um, Iconica in VE Pro. And that will then send all of that information back to the Dorico mixer. So you still have the mixer with all of your instruments in it and it keeps the Dorico file size down to a minimum. So yes, I know some people are gonna look at it and going, my goodness, this is complicated and expensive. Potentially, yes. And if that's the case, then there are cheaper sample libraries out there. But if you want the kind of you know playback options and you want to use this kind of stuff, here is an option. You can also use VE Pro with other libraries like Contact or BBC ESO in Contact or you know VSL, of course. Their their own libraries will work very well in uh, in VNR Ensemble Pro. And if you want to offload some of this information and the processing to another computer somewhere on your network or even multiple computers, you can have one computer running brass, one computer running strings you know there's a new whole world out there you can do this but actually you know we've I've designed it here to be set up very simply and using these connectors it doesn't matter which computer these are all on but it's it's the expression map data and everything else getting there that's the important bit so in Vienna Ensemble Pro just so you're also aware what I've done is I've set up so the woodwinds are here here is the woodwind family I've set up that the mix goes to all of the right outputs handily they're shortcut for the mixer is also F3. So they have a mixer here. All of these outputs are set up and all of those are then mapping to the Dorico file. Um, also, what you'll notice in here is if you want to play with each of these individual instruments, so for example, the piccolo here, when you go to edit, um, whether you do this in Dorico the, the, or whether you do it in here in VE Pro, there's this extra option here for show mixer page. And this has microphone techniques. So one of the things that Iconica and some of, some of these other libraries have is different microphone techniques. So if you want to pick a different, you know, an ORTF or a tree mic, or, you know, uh, there's a surround option, you can pick and balance your instruments with, with different microphone techniques. There's also, of course, you could change the, you know, the, the pan positions of things. Potentially, maybe I should have adjusted the pan of some of these instruments for the full orchestra. But I'm also aware that not everybody's necessarily using this as a full orchestra, so I don't know if that would be more off-putting or not. Let me know. If you think we should we should include that, then, then please let me know. And you can see I've also loaded a piccolo, but I've loaded multiple flutes, multiple oboes, English horn, uh, multiple clarinets, multiple bassoons. In the brass, I've loaded four horns, four trumpets, three trombones, euphonium and tuba. Um, pitch percussion, uh, there's a whole bunch of um, pitch percussion in here. Temple blocks and wood blocks also sneaked in because in the unpitched percussion, I ran out of slots. So there were only 16 slots available for all of the unpitched percussion. And also the temple blocks and wood blocks that they give you, they do actually have five different options of different pitches should you want them. So I thought it's sort of pitched. 
it, it's there anyway. And the Celesta is also in here. And then in the strings, um, I've, I've loaded the, you know, the the five strings that you needed. And I'm also, for a couple of the projects I'm using, I've realized that you might want, for Divisi purposes and other purposes, you might actually want extra strings. So I think you'll probably, when you get this template, there'll be probably 10 loaded into here. But if you need more, the handy thing in here is that you can also right click on this program here and you can copy it and then you can go to a different slot and you can just right click and paste. So you don't have to set anything up. You can literally copy and paste all of these options that I put in for all of the key switches and everything else. You can copy and paste that into another slot if you need to use it elsewhere. And one of the reasons you might want to do that for Divisi um, particularly is that if you're using, using things like legato patches in many of these sample libraries, they're monophonic. So the sustain would be polyphonic, so you can play more than one note. So if you had two instruments going to the same instrument, then you're going to need uh, polyphony to, to get two notes played. When you're doing a legato or a legato run, because of the way they work, they don't. They, it's monophonic. They don't allow you to play more than one note. So you need more than one instance for that. So let's look at some files and how this kind of thing will work. I'm aware there's some uh, comments over here, so just bear with me a second while I check these comments as well. Oh, there's quite a few. Bear with me a second. So just to clarify, I think we've I think we're okay. So yes, the autosave, you could turn the autosave off. So yes, you can disable autosave if you want to. On your head be it, but you can disable autosave if you if you want to, if if that's gonna be a problem. Um but the problem is every time you press save to save the project, because you're going to want to do that relatively regularly anyway, it's going to take a little while just to save a potentially 200 meg file. So, you know, it's up to you, but you know, that I, you can disable the autosave if you really wanted to. Yes, today I'm running all of this on the same computer. Um, it happens to be a Mac with 32 gig of RAM, but I'm also running a live stream on it and PowerPoint and, you know, some other things. Um, and it will depend how many instruments you want to run. Is it better on a secondary computer? It depends on the specs of your computer. Um, my second computer down here, no, because it doesn't have as much RAM and, and resources actually as this one. So it, it really depends on, you know, on your case. Um, hang on a second. I think that's uh, Daniel's answered that one. Thank you, Daniel. Um, will we do playback templates for other libraries? Well, actually, the playback templates, they're already there. You can easily adapt them to work with VE Pro. That's what I've done here. Maybe, actually, for example, with the VSL ones, they would they would do that anyway, because they made the playback templates for their VSL synchronized library. But potentially, yes, um, well, we could make that. We could make those kind of things available. Um, just checking down the questions. I think Daniel's answering some of these the, the same way I am. So that that's OK. Let me see if there's anything not. Um, let me have a look. A pre-balanced template would be great. Yes. Okay. You know, let let some other people know about that. So, if if you think actually it would be useful to for us to have set up the, you know, the the pan positions in the orchestra, potentially even I suppose the the reverb distance for the front to back, then yeah, maybe maybe we should do some other versions of this. And uh, so let's yep, yeah, uh, let's hear some bits of it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's do that. So. When I was looking at, you know, my problem with, with hearing some of this is I don't necessarily know this library or any other library better than any other. So um, a side-by-side -side comparison is potentially, you know, there, there are some things that you also need to consider. But let's have a look at some files and, uh, um, you know, um, what they sound like. So to start off with, I found... Um, and you'll find on the website for Iconica, there's a, a piece that plays in, in the video. In fact, let me just um, grab that for you. If you're um, interested in Iconica, on the Steinberg website, there's, there's a video here. Um, and it mentions orchestral tools as well. And it tells you, you know, tells you about it. And you can hear various bits in here. And this play button here will also play you an Iconica trailer. So I contacted um, Martin, who did that file, and said, can I have a look at it to use in Dorico? So 
he sent me a Cubase project and I've taken all the MIDI information out of that and put it into Dorico um, and then assigned that using my template into Vienna Ensemble Pro. So even though I've just switched files in Dorico, it's not had to load any samples. All it's had to do is say, oh, I'm actually going to use basically a, a similar set of connectors to the samples that are already loaded, which is quite handy. So now I've got you know more full orchestra. So let's have a listen to this piece. So that, it, it's not going to be as well mixed, because if you want to have a listen to it on the website, there's a properly mixed version of that in Cubase, but that's the version playing with the Cubase MIDI information, playing through my template in Dorico uh, as to how that, all that works. And they've used a fair amount of uh, spiccato samples and various other things in that. So um, I've got somebody saying that there's no sound, so let me know if there's a problem there. Um, as far as I know, it's it's still working, so I'll just let me know if it, that's... Ah, um, oh, I lost audio halfway through there. Okay, well, let's try another one, and you know, let's um, let's see what happens. That particular piece, like I said, I can I'll, I can make a file available if you like after the session, but it's available um, on the, the website anyway. Let's switch to another one and see if we're going to have the same problem there. And I'll just, at the same time check to make sure there's nothing going on at my end that's going to stop it. No, we should be okay. Right, let's see what happens with that one. So, um, One of the files we looked at last session uh, was this one. Now this one was originally a file that VSL did as one of their example files. So if you were to compare a library with you know, a, a library playback between libraries. The playback template will be a fairly major part of it because now using this playback template, it's loaded all of the, the right sections into here for Iconica instead of VSL. However, a lot of these instruments would also have had CC data, so MIDI data, particular to VSL. Um, so for example, they were using CC11 for some of their expression, they were using CC14 for some of their other things, they were using CC28, they were also using CC2. Um, so some of that MIDI data, you may need to either check, know what it does, or delete before you can run it through another library, because you don't want mid data from one library getting in the way of another library. You know, it might be sending the wrong controllers, for example. So just beware, it's not necessarily a take this piece and play it in this uh, library. Also, there may be some things that you want to add in the, uh, to, for one library that doesn't work in another. So for example, in VSL, in, in the synchronized SE, um, they were using a velocity crossfade option, which if you don't enable it, then makes some of the dynamics um, you know, sound different. So those kind of things, just to be aware. Now this one I've kind of reset a little bit and I'll play it through Iconica. I'm gonna press play and let's see if the, the audio also works. So uh, let's, let's see what happens. It did earlier for me, so let's see what happens. I've just worked out what the problem is. So I can play this file, it's fine. Do you want to, and let me know if you want to hear the other one again because I've worked out what the problem is.
Okay, and I'm just going to load the other file again, which won't, won't take a second because it's already loaded in VE Pro. But to answer a couple of the questions that are here, um, the uh, can the crescendo longs and crescendo shorts be used? Actually, I'm not using those. I haven't loaded them into I uh, Iconica because I'm using Dorico using the sustain patch from Iconica and then a modulation change for or a, or a note velocity depending on the instrument to do the the change for um for crescendos um because their crescendos generally are a fixed length which isn't terribly helpful for us so at the moment you know I, I haven't done that uh, no i don't no i don't know i haven't seen anything about whether it differentiates down bows from up bows um tiago i uh, i haven't seen anything and so I don't think it does. No, sorry. Um, and there was a question about using Note Performer in VE Pro. I don't think there's any point in doing that because Note Performer is quite a lightweight library anyway um, and loads relatively quick. So, um, and also Frank mentioned about the, the mixer. What I've done in, in Vienna is uh, you'll notice if you've used Note Performer with Dorico that in the Dorico mixer, you don't get many uh, faders because of the number of outputs it doesn't have. Um, so it just kind of shows up as a stereo pair effectively. Um, in At the moment in, in Dorico with this VE Pro template, let me just expand this mixer here. Um, what you'll get is all of the instruments loaded in the Dorico mixer because I've given them all separate outputs from Vienna Ensemble Pro. So I don't think this would help with Note Performer, but it means that for, for this template, you know, here are the instruments. There's a blank here because I'm, there's no English horn, there's no cor anglais in this piece. Um, and of course, it's allocated a slot. Um, so it's still here. Um, similarly, here there's a contrabassoon missing, and then I didn't need all the trumpets. And you know the the percussion you've got you know it's not using all of the percussion, and um, you know so so there are some things there where you you know you get some blanks, but they're all here, um, uh, and, you know and everything else is there. So what I'm also going to now do is I'll play this piece again because I've worked out what the problem was. Hopefully got it that time. Now, I know what some people will be thinking, well, he's probably set all this up so that it all sounds fantastic. I'm not that clever. Um, but, you know, I have I have put, you know, set some of this up, obviously, so that, you know, the, the techniques and various other things work. I've changed some dynamics very slightly. But I did also think I got a centre... Well, I was looking at a file yesterday, and I thought, actually, let's have a look at that one. So here is... This was a MIDI file. And I've opened the MIDI file in Dorico, and you can probably tell I've opened the MIDI file in Dorico, especially the timpani here, for example. Now, this was from a website where they're comparing sample libraries, and I don't know how much work they've done to, to when they're comparing the sample libraries. And I said, you know, you may when ideally you want to know BBC SO well if you're going to use it. You want to know VSL or Iconica well so that you can get the best out of it. I don't necessarily. So what I wanted to know is, and what you probably want to know, is how much work do I really have to put into this? And, you know... If I just loaded a MIDI file, what would happen? So here is a MIDI file, and we're going to see what happens. So this one, all I've done so far is I've opened the MIDI file, I've applied the playback template so that it's loaded some things over here. There are going to be some issues. For example, it's got a lot of section type stuff that really needs splitting out. You need to apply a filter and split some things out. What I did change, the violin section all kind of came in a bit random. They all kind of came in as three violins. So I've made a violin se section, a viola section, and a cello section. Um, but And then, you know, just um, copy, uh, dragged the instruments down so that they're, they're, they're correct down there. But there's still only one violin. Um, so let's just play a little bit of this. So I think this one will work from the beginning as well, if I... 
It will. Good. Right, you're all you're all working. Now let's go to a more interesting bit after the timpani does a you know, here's here's the MIDI notated roll that we could obviously easily tidy up. <laughs> Yeah, let's not do that. So let's go from here. I also noticed that this file, the way they've set this MIDI file up, is that it's not uh, the right meter either. But never mind. Let's you know play it and, and see how this one works. I just noticed something. So, um, sorry. Um, in Vienna here, in Iconica, there's legato and legato runs. I, I did know, I did change this and I, I forgot to mention it. So what I did is, and I'm going to put this into the playback template by default, in the expression map for the strings, doo -doo 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 -doo, um, there's a legato for, uh, the legato runs uses the short notes automatically and uses the legato runs patch instead of legato. So you can get legato runs quick, great. But they're also really handy in this piece um, for natural notes. So they don't yet have slurs over them, so they're not officially legato. So I've added another uh, option here for natural you know, short notes generally to play with that legato runs because it's nice. And if you don't want it, when you get it in my template, you can just untick the enabled button uh, if, you, if you don't want it. But in this piece, because it's, nothing's been tidied up, it's going to work really well. The second thing is that from about at least here, if not earlier, the problem you're going to have is the strings problem I had. We're using a quick legato patch. There's no way it can play both of these notes all the time in the legato runs. So what you would need to potentially do is in setup mode for your violins, I've added a shortcut already because I do this a lot, just to duplicate the instrument that's here and add another one. So here I've got two violins now. Um, and you want to take these notes. So let's take up to here and you'll want to uh, put the lower notes down in the second violin. So if you use something like a filter to select all of the... Um, in fact, if we, if we, if we let's deselect all of the uh, top or single notes, um, I've got uh, shortcuts for these set up. Maybe we should do a session at some point on a stream deck. I don't know. Anyway, um, I'm just going to move these down to the second violins. So now, in the template that's set up, they, those second violins will automatically be assigned to a, the uh, to another output in VE Pro. So they're going to one and two now. So now they can both play legato runs properly. So let's play this bit. Same problem here. So we've got doubles of, uh, of notes here. So actually, some of this MIDI file would need tidying up. But the idea here was to say, I've not done anything else to this MIDI file. It could do with some dynamics. It could do potentially with some other things. But anything else is being read automatically. And that's what Iconica would sound like if you just literally gave it notes and, you know, and anything else. So I've not added any extra controllers or anything else to make it work. All I've done for playback is go to play the play menu for playback template, and I've chosen the V Pro Iconica because it's all loaded in V Pro. So that's that's all I've done. So I just wanted to kind of, as an example of playback options, I, like I said, I'm a bit nervous about doing a, you know, a shoot down between, you know, Note Performer and VSL and BBC SO and this, because they may be that some libraries sound better for some different techniques, for some different styles of music. So you might want to pick a library depending on, you know, your style of music. But I anyway, I think what you know, my what I can add here is here is an easy way to set it up. So when you want to use some of these libraries, then you can now do that with Iconica. If you have Iconica or you're thinking of it in Iconica, especially on the sale at the moment, here's a playback template for it so we can make that load a bit easier. So let me just uh, check some of the comments again. Bear with me a second. 
Uh, there's a couple of other things I'll, I'll uh, mention as well, just at the end of here. So, but let me see if there's anything else that I've missed. Bear with me a second. There's questions about violin up bows and down bows. I don't know. I don't know if they're going to add these to Iconica, but yes, I suppose ideally there is. There are some things that we would like Dorico to be able to trigger. Um, so things like violin up bows and down bows could be some of them. Um, there's you know, there's a, a few other things that maybe we can add to Dorico and some sample libraries may add as well and we can trigger those kind of things automatically, but they, they're not in um, Iconica at the moment. Um, also, I don't know how much influence we have over the Iconica team and what they would be able to add or anything else. Um, let me just have a look. Hang on. Um, there's a staccatissimo in the bassoon part. Is it because the simple staccato did not sound convincing enough? I think that was in the other file we played. Uh, I think, well, what I tried to do when I imported the MIDI file is I looked at which sample was being triggered in Cubase and then made the Dorico file do the same. So in this trailer file, um, for example, in, you know, in, in the horns here or any of the other instruments, if it's you know if that's what I've put in, it's because that's what was being used in the Cubase file to make it sound correct. There is a staccato option as well, and act, you know you can easily change them. So in in Cubase, you put in a you know a key switch change or something like that, you know, with an expression map. Um, in Dorico, all of these and what they're actually being used, I, I, I've got condensing turned on, haven't I? So I can't select things that way. There we go. So turn condensing off. So all of these, for example, if you want to switch between samples, so here's the staccatissimo and staccato, then all you need to do in Dorico is just change the, you know, this display here, and Dorico will automatically change the the, the playback for you because that's part of the expression map. So um, I, I don't know the answer to. It wasn't a deliberate. Oh, it didn't sound convincing enough. It was literally what was in the Cubase file. So that's that's what I used. Uh, hang on a second. The, um, Uh, I think Daniel's answered that one about uh, processors. Um, I think that's okay. Yes, as <laughs> Frank said, the same. All libraries vary in quality depending on the style of the score. Yes. Um, so, yeah. Um, and yes, you, you you can do your own trials. I mean, it, you can download the Iconica trial it, uh, and, and try that if you want to with your own scores. And the playback templates, I'll make them available probably tomorrow. There's a couple of tweaks I want to add before I put them on the blog. Um, so then you can you can try the try these out, no problem. Um, just to kind of to, to to finish off, there was you know I'm, I'm happy to take some other questions on these. Um, some of the, you know, the, the negative bits are, I've designed this template to work for a full orchestra. If you only want to use a couple of instruments in Iconica, then it may be that actually you can leave it in the same file, in, you know, in the same project. You don't need to use VE Pro if you just want to use one of the string samples or the oboe sample or something like that. And you can still use the expression map for that if you want to. It's just I, I haven't set this one up that way because the way things are loaded in in Hallian in you know in, in banks of 16 it kind of made sense for me to set them up because it's a full orchestral library I've set it up with that in mind if we get a lot of inquiries from people saying I just want to add a little bit of this or you know a little bit of something else then okay let me know um, email me on discoverdorico at steinberg.de and and I can send you a, you know the the information that you need to say you know here's how you would do it um, so don't be afraid of you know how on earth do I set this up manually J just ask but so the negative bit is is simply that I've designed this the positive is I've designed it for uh, to be for a full orchestra if you only want a couple of samples they're not there the other thing is in this library, as the similar with BBCSO, there are no pianos, there are no drum kits. Um, the only thing you know similar to a piano is a Celesta, because it's designed for to, you know as as an orchestral library, and maybe they presume you've already got a piano. So what you can also do in Dorico if you want to is, uh, and I've actually already done this um, uh, for myself, is that. Yeah, you take the playback template, so you can take the playback template I give you, the VE Pro one, you can use the copy button so to make a duplicate of it, and I've made this one here, so I'm just going to edit this one. And all I've done is add HSSE and HSO to that. So you just, just click on the Add Automatic and you choose that option. So what Dorico will now do is it will load all the woodwinds from here, all the brass, all the pitch percussion, all the unpitch, all the strings, and then instruments that are left over that it couldn't load from 
uh, Iconica, it will get those from the ones you already have in, in HSO. You could do the same if you wanted to, I guess, with Note Performer, if you have Note Performer and the Note, Note Performer um, playback template. Um, so what this will do is kind of pick up pianos, drum kits, that kind of thing, and you can use them in conjunction. You can use a bit of some of the instruments from you know, Iconica in VE Pro and some of the instruments just in Halion on, you know, on the same computer you know, in a new instance. There's no problem doing that. So you know, the, while some of the instruments don't exist in some of these other libraries, you can easily get Dorico to mix and match those. If you want to, you could say, I want the strings from Iconica, and I want the brass from another library, and I want the woodwinds from another library. You can make your own playback template to do exactly what you want. Just use mine as a, as a, basi a, a basis for that, if you like. And you can also just click plus to add yourself a new blank template, and then in the manual list, you'll have a bunch of Iconica things that, uh, that I'll have added. There's also VE Pro Iconica things if you want to use those, um, as well as you know if you've got other libraries installed. These SYZD ones are the ones from uh, VSL from last month. There's also the BBCSO ones. So if you want, you know, you can mix and match these and pick a family and, uh, you know, and decide where they're going to go, where they're going to be routed to and set your own playback template up. And then, of course, in Dorico, what you can also then do is in your preferences. So it's um, edit preferences on a on a PC. Um, you can use the you can set your own default playback template. So if you said on this computer, I always want to use my setup of a bit of this and that and everything else, you can set up your own default playback template that Dorico will use for all new projects that you start uh, on that computer. So just kind of a, just a couple of things to finish off. I know. You know, you you want to know what's in it. You can look at all you know how many techniques there are on you know for any of the instruments, which instruments exist. Th that information is also on the website. Um, I wouldn't say that Iconica has more. In fact, it has probably less techniques than VSL, but VSL costs a lot more money. Um, it has some different instruments to some of the other libraries, so you might want to check out. It's normally the far ends, you know. The really high woodwinds or the really low brass, you know, it's those those kind of things, the p potential differences between libraries. But you can, you know, you can check them out on the website, and maybe I'll I'll try and put together a blog article, maybe that kind of you know lists some of these, so you can decide what what kind of thing you want. So, I'm just going to check the comments again and see uh, if there's anything else that I've missed before we finish. There's a lot of comments. Thank you. <laughs> it's nice to see that uh, that people are here. Uh, yes, Tiago. So I saw that's yes. You can add an instance of contact, for example, in VE Pro for Grand Piano, and then add that to the Dorico template. Yes. Yeah, no problem. Um, and you, know, you can add contact directly into Dorico if you want to. As I said, the, the reason I'm using the Honor Ensemble Pro is that I'm, it's not saving all of the Iconica information into the Dorico project. Using contact and many other instruments uh, and sample libraries doesn't actually add a huge amount to the Dorico project. So up until today, I've generally just added it to, the, to Dorico directly. But for Iconica, because there's so much information that it wants to save, I've used the, the decouple option in, in Vienna Ensemble Pro. So at the end of the day, I'll save my Dorico project, and then I will also save the Vienna Ensemble Pro project, the two separate programs. It also means because they're separate, if for some reason one should crash, let's say Dorico could crash, or Vienna Ensemble could crash, the other program is still running. So you know, if, for example, Dorico crashed, when you load it up again, you don't have to load all your samples because they're already there in Vienna Ensemble because it's just sat there, you know, yep, fine, just waiting for you to, you know, come back. When Dorico then comes back, it just reconnects and carries on. It also means when you're switching projects, it's quite quick to switch projects. Uh, not, you know, necessarily instant, it's going to take a few seconds, but all it's doing is kind of, you know, connecting to the samples that are already loaded. It doesn't have to reload all the samples again. It does mean that the Vienna Ensemble server file for Iconica is going to be about 200 meg, um, but it means you only have to load it once, really, at the beginning of the day, and then save it once at the end of the day. It doesn't have to do all, you know, get involved with the autosave in Dorico and the work you're actually doing uh, in Dorico there. So hopefully that helps, you know, clear up a bit of that as well. Um, I've got some more questions, but it's bear with me a second again. Um, some uh, problems adjusting from Cubase to Dorico. 
I've done a little session on it, but um, Rudy, if you want to get in touch and, and let me know, maybe there's some other things we can look at. Um, the email address is discoverdorico at steinberg.de. So all one word, discoverdorico at steinberg.de, and we can look at those. Uh, interestingly enough, with this Iconica trailer project, I actually did it twice. I did it once as, as XML, um, and of course it doesn't sound quite the same because it was originally played into Cubase live then the the live MIDI data was lost so actually I then transferred it as MIDI and in this case this one came out better as MIDI because it didn't have dynamics written in the score uh, you know it didn't have that kind of information I can add that easily again later in Dorico anyway but it didn't have it already so I pulled it pulled it in via MIDI and then just used the requantize option a fair bit so you select some notes and use this requantize option to get the display correct uh, in Dorico. And then you can just add things like, you know, the spiccato, staccatos, anything else like that in, in Dorico. Um, so actually, this one was brought over as, as MIDI from Cubase. Um, I think that's OK. Um, oh, sorry, that just jumped. Hang on a second. Is there a way to delete and clean up all MIDI CCs? Mm, no. Although, mm, I think one thing you can do, I haven't tried it, but if you want to remove live playback data, you can select the notes you want this to happen on, and in the play menu, you can do reset playback overrides, and that should remove any MIDI CC data as well as, I know it resets you know, note velocities, it resets note start positions, you know, that kind of thing. The problem with that is it's a bit kind of everything. You might want the live start position and the feel of the velocity, but you just don't want the MIDI CC data. And there, so there isn't an option at the moment to, to reset that. What Dorico will tell you when you open the MIDI CC lane here is a little star next to anything that does have MIDI data. So you can at least choose that. And if you just you know shrink shrink your file up, I'm using a pinch and drag on the trackpad. You can easily see if there's anything in that file, and you can uh, relatively easily delete it. But you might need to go through some of the instruments just to check that. And if they've got more than one uh, you know MIDI CC that they were using, then at least there's a little asterisk with it, so you know which ones to look for. But you might have to spend a few minutes doing that, unfortunately, at the moment. Maybe we can do that quicker in future. Uh, that's okay. So smaller file sizes, yes and switching a lot between files. Yes, as Frank said, if you're switching a lot between different Dorico files, it is wise to switch at least one of them to the silence playback template, because then it doesn't have any samples to load. So in the play menu up here, if you're switching a lot, you can either go to the playback template, and in this list you will find there's one called silence, which is a factory one. Um, so that one means it when you switch files, it was not loading samples. Um, and then you can later apply a playback template if you want it, or you can import one project into the other. So if you open a project and then you go to File Import Flows, you can import another project into it. So then it's all in one project, and they can you know they can still be on separate windows. They you know they can have separate scores. There'll be just be separate flows in the same project. So then you're not loading and unloading samples as well. So that might help as well. Uh, that's okay. Daniel says that doesn't remove automation, so I might have been wrong about the reset playback overrides. And how do you know there's a green screen setup? I, I don't know how you'd, how you'd know that. And uh, uh, yes. And Frank, what do you mean by a filter option like indoors? Do you mean for MIDI CC messages, maybe? I presume you do. But anyway. I think you. I'm, I'm going to watch and see if you reply. I presume that's what you do. Yes. So, what would you like to see in the next Discover Dorico session? Um, oh, how a quick question about Divisi. How do you change the output? Oh, good question, Evan. I I, I meant to look at that. So, so what we've done in uh, we got we've got some in this file even. So when you've got Divisi happening, so you've got. I suppose I should show you in the score. We've got violin one, but the violin twos have Divisi happening here. So you want different playback. You know, you want them to output to, to different places. Um, so what I'm going to do in the uh, Iconica file, which I'll just bring in, here it is, is you'll, I'll, you know, you'll load you two sections instead. So instead of five, I'll load you 10. Um, these were ones I was playing with. So there's a violins one on slot one, and there's a violins one on slot six. So what you will do is, if you need it, you'll be able to go to the play menu 
and the violins. In fact, if you choose the violin notes and then uh, select it, it will highlight them down here automatically. Now, this little toggle here will say independent playback of voices, or enable independent playback of voices. So you'll turn that toggle on. I think you'll see for some other instruments. So uh, for example, here it's off. So you'll turn that on and then instead of all voices, you see that all voices isn't going anywhere. The You can choose the each voice. So up stem voice one is now going to Iconica strings. And this one's going to slot two. And this one here is going to slot seven. So it, to map that across to here, the first one, this is violins two, is going to slot two. And the next one is going to, at the moment, slot seven. So you would just be able to choose the, the those and choose which ones you need. Now, if you needed more, if you needed more sections, you can, like I said, I think earlier on, hopefully, you can right click on this, you can copy the program and you could stick it into slot 10 or one of the other slots. There will be vacant slots at the bottom. So you could stick it into slot 16 if you wanted to. So then you can say, for example, that this violin two can use Iconica strings slot channel, in this case, 16. And then the last thing to check, in, uh, just in case something hasn't you know, loaded or anything else, you're using this slot, Iconica Strings. So in the endpoint setup here, just make sure that you have an expression map also loaded for that so that it can do all the switching for you automatically. So if you've populated slot 16, make sure in here you've also put in the Iconica. In fact, I'll, it's easier to start typing. The Iconica Strings expression map. And if you put that in as well, um, when you've assigned your violin, then that's how you could add a, add in other divisi um, if you've got them. So if you've got more complex divisi than I've set up in the file, you can you can easily add the others just by copying the option that's there and uh, the, applying the, uh, the expression map here. And then this is where you would assign uh, Dorico to send the information to that, uh, that, that channel. Okay, so uh, hopefully Evan, that'll answer that question. Uh, feature <laughs> a greatest hits of shortcuts. Mm, I change mine sometimes. And um, one thing I did wonder about shortcuts and potentially for another session is, you know, should we look at things like the Stream Deck or MetaGrid and how you would use those? And do you want to use the Notation Central shortcuts for the Stream Deck, for example, you know, and, and that kind of thing? So that could be potentially be a, another session. Um, could we tackle pipe organ registration sometime? Maybe using helped work? Possibly. Uh, Alan, send me send me an email. Discover Dorico at Steinberg.de and, and let's look at that. I also believe that Note Performer can do some things with organ registration as well. So maybe we could look into some things like that. Yes. Yeah. Um, Evan asked quite another question about the Divisi. Um, the, so the, the routing and the way things work is uh, and Dorico is on a per voice. So if you go to notes and rest colors and voice colors, then you can see when you're using a different voice because it's a different color. And this is what you're assigning at, in play mode. You're assigning the, the voice, the color. So you can also do it um, by selecting a note. And if you were to change the voice of that note with this change voice option, uh, to one of the available options, then th that that you could also add other voices that way and have those routed to, to different options should you want to. Uh, Frank said Note Form is able to do some basic organ registration and GPO. I presume you mean and GPO can also do organ registration. So yes, okay. Potentially we could we could look at those kind of things in another session. Yeah, if there's another one on playback type things. Um, and Daniel says it's a real can of worms. Maybe we won't do that then. <laughs> Maybe I should stop this session before we say anything that we uh, regret. Um, jazz and big band. Well, or possibly some other um, big band libraries. Yeah, there was. There's a. There's a few, aren't there? That are available. Maybe we should look at some big band things as well. Right. So maybe we should. Uh, we should stop there for today. And. Um, if you've got any other questions after this session, let me know on discoverdorico at steinberg.de. I don't think we've ever done one that's quite gone over the hour, so I, I apologise. You can at least come back and watch this later, but you can tell I have fun with this. Um, right, so 
ask me any questions um, in the chat. I'll stay on for a bit and we'll, we'll answer them in the chat. Um, and then email discoverdorico at steinberg.de and maybe we'll get another one of these sessions in before Christmas. You know, it's a month today till Christmas, but we'll, we'll, maybe we'll see what we can do. So uh, thank you very much for joining us in this session and uh, please join us next time. Uh, like I said, email address discoverdorico at steinberg.de and all the details and things we've looked at today for these templates I will make them available very soon, probably tomorrow, on uh, on the blog so that you can download them. If you're really desperate and you want me to send you a link as soon as it's available, also email me, discoverdorico at steinberg.de, um, and then I, I'll email those to you as soon as they're available for, for this Iconica template. Okay? So, thank you very much, and, uh, and until next time, and we'll, we'll see you then.